Okay, we now definitely have Andrew Barron's PowerPoint presentation. Um, he is going to talk to you about the end of time. Um, he has a very interesting perspective doing what he does, and you guys are going to learn a lot, I think, too. Okay, please welcome Andrew. How cliche to start off my presentation with a Gutenberg press machine and to suggest that somehow this is a part of a long line of tradition of uh, media democratization, but actually I'm going down a different angle. It's all about the distance and how long it takes for information to travel, and we are finally now at the end of time. And what I mean by that is that books now obviously allowed that to get information to people quicker. A telescope uh, subsequently came along technologically and allowed us to get information from one point to another even quicker. Getting that information quicker leads to power like stocks and uh, knowing when a business is gonna, uh, uh, going to change or being able to know when there's war and with a radio and then a television. It just continues to get the message shorter and shorter and shorter and more and more information. And we continue to get that uh, closer and closer as we move through technology and humanity. Even with computers, uh, it's all just about getting information quicker and quicker and quicker. And with that, um, we are now set into this whole trend. But it's part of uh, human nature, essentially, and that there's other ways of looking at it. But today, finally, with computers, we're at this point where we really are about at the end of time, where the amount of time that it takes for information to get there is no longer relevant for the most part. Sometimes with AT&T, maybe, but otherwise, <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's basically there, and that's not the question. The, the information is there. It's more like, uh, how can I get it? In uh, 1965, Moore, uh, uh, Moore's law was established, um, and this basically said that there would be a doubling of transistors every two years, and that's held for 40 years. A whole nother angle of humanity getting uh, information across quicker and quicker. If anybody's ever had to struggle over reading the Iliad, it's sort of like, you know, somebody tell me, what does this mean? Well, as we've moved forward through time, leave it up to a blogger to tell us exactly what it means. Just get right to the point, state the headline. But we've moved on from blogging already. Now we're already in this state where uh, things are moving faster and faster. We're getting our message across quicker and quicker. And now we can um, say the same thing much quicker. So um, all of this basically has uh, been happening, and it's a good way of looking ahead into the future and helping to contextualize the web also. And so um, because we also have a scenario as a result of the web where information is now trans, uh, it's being transmitted uh, through various different people, there's no bottlenecks. There's no one person in control it just gets passed around. So in that context, we have Web 1.0, which was defined up until the dot-com crash. It essentially said, here we have uh, the marketplace. The market is here. We can now make transactions on the internet, Google, Yahoo. Web 2.0, it's so easy to contextualize now that we're standing here after the fact. It was all just a bunch of platforms that allowed people to publish. Everybody can publish pictures. Publish your video, publish your text, publish your very specific, what, oh, that's not fair. Who put that in there? Seriously, what, oh. All right. Yeah, and he was there before Kanye, too, all right. So anyway, we're there now. We're at this end of time. And so the next phase, essentially, or what to, what's coming next? Well, now that we've got the situation with Twitter where it's, you know, the value behind Twitter is essentially the real-time search. The fact that we can get this information really, really quickly within a few seconds. Um, after Twitter has been blown up, we've seen Facebook, obviously, um, rearrange their whole entire system to focus on doing a stream like that. It's the real-time stream, getting that information so quickly within seconds. And so you ask, where is Google? Well, Google is actually already here. And if you know um, the right kind of uh, way to tweak the URL, you can see here I've got returns 
uh, within seconds. And see on the left hand there, you can sort by minute or by date or whatever. So it's all really coming together quickly. But this is where we already are now. This is the real time web. The next phase is all about filtering. And that's basically the end of my discussion is what's next. It's these kinds of uh, platforms like TechMeme and Google Maps and saying there's so much noise that people have published out there, how can I get uh, filtered out uh, the very specific information that I need? So over the next year, you can use that to apply to the web and understand sort of and contextualize the next phase. So um, that's the end of time.